Are you ready to scale up your Amazon KDP sales without having to spend a ton of money in ads? Have you been too nervous to spend money to make money in terms of advertising? Or maybe you don't have the budget to spend yet because you haven't seen sales on Amazon KDP? That's exactly where I was at and I was so thrilled to find lottery ad tutorials so that I could finally take steps forward without breaking the bank when I wasn't really making a lot of money on Amazon yet. Hey, it's Rebecca, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, I have been talking about my adventure on Amazon KDP and learning about the highs, the lows, and whether it's truly been worthwhile as a side hustle. Honestly, because Amazon KDP low content publishing began as this experiment and this mini adventure, I wasn't that interested in trying out ads. I did not wanna put myself in a position that advertising cost was losing me money on book sales, especially when I still wasn't sure whether I actually knew what I was doing. Luckily, I came across some really great tutorials on YouTube that taught me about lottery ads and made it seem really simple and really approachable as a way to spend small, small, small amounts of money at a time to hopefully help pick up book sales. And it has proven to be incredibly successful for me. In fact, I did just record a video to show that I attempted a true targeted ad in January and that actually lost me money. So I'm a little scared off by those and I'm backing this lottery ad strategy 110%. Now, shout outs to the pros on YouTube that I found the tutorials through. And unfortunately, it's been a while since I've seen the videos, but I will find those videos and I am going to drop the accounts in the notes below and give them a shout out here because you pros helped make me confident in attempting this strategy and I wanna make sure you get the credit for that. So without further ado, let's jump into lottery ads. Lottery ads are a low budget ad strategy that lets you list multiple books in one ad campaign as low as possible. Basically, if you have a bunch of books, instead of targeting based on season or audience, you can throw them all together in a group and let Amazon's algorithm work to find cheap placements where those books might be scattered across and then hopefully get a click for this incredibly low budget you've set. It's time to jump right in and try out lottery ads without being fearful that they will lose you money. You can start by being in your bookshelf and heading up to the top right marketing tab, which will bring you to a whole collection of marketing resources. Find the box that has Amazon ads, choose your marketplace, so mine is amazon.com, and head to your ads console. Now, because I already have ads set up, it will bring me to my existing campaigns. You may have to go through a few steps if you haven't used any ads before to make sure that you have payment method on file, etc. The thing with ads is that unlike the cost of printing the book, which Amazon will take out of the revenue once you sell, Ads do have to come out of your own pocket, so you will have to add a credit card account on file to pay for your ad spend, which is different from the way that you make and spend money with printing the books on the front end. You can see that I was immediately logged into campaigns and you can scroll down to the blue button that says create campaign, which will give you the opportunity to start your brand new lottery ad campaign. We want to choose sponsored products and continue. And you'll see that we have several options to fill out, but don't be alarmed, it is pretty straightforward. And I just followed what the pros told me without doing too much extra research to get this started. Remember, you can always tinker along the way as you see how things are going and as you get more comfortable and more confident. But the important thing is to just get started if you want to see any results. So I start with ad format, standard ad. That means we don't have to spend any time or thought on setting up anything custom. Then you scroll down and go to ad group settings where you can name your ad group. 
at any time, you can always scroll over this eye icon for extra info. So for instance, this will show me that ad groups are a way to organize and manage your ads within your campaign. You can also click through the links to read more about them in detail, but I'm just going to leave this ad name that it auto-generated because I'm not actually going to launch this new campaign. I'm just walking you through the steps right now. Okay, by scrolling down, you can see products and this will immediately populate your entire book catalog. Now, one thing that's unfortunate is that it only shows you 50 books at a time. So if you have started to build up a nice library size, like mine here of 348 results, it will take you an extra minute or two to get all of your books added. Here is where you can go through and choose all of the books that you want added to this campaign. And you can choose to sort them, for instance, if you happen to have two very specific niches that have nothing to do with one another, maybe that's a consideration. But from everything I saw, part of the benefit of lottery ads was just kind of throwing a grab bag in and seeing what sticks. So even though mine are all different activities or seasonalities, I went ahead and added all on this page. And of course, that was only the first 50 products. So then you do have to scroll to the right, add all on this page, scroll to the right, add all on this page etc. until all of your books are added. Again, if you do have multiple pages because it's only allowing you to add 50 at a time. Once you've done that, you can scroll down to targeting. And for this simple, easy, straightforward campaign, I am hitting automatic targeting. Again, we are going for easy, 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 not overanalyzing yet, just getting these ads started and automatic targeting is going to be how we do that. Then you'll see that the automatic targeting box lets you set your default bid. And this is the part that people are talking about when they say low cost. Now there's a lot that happens behind the scenes in terms of cost per click, and if you're not familiar with advertising, ultimately the point is we wanna get clicks for cheap, right? I don't want to pay $1 to have somebody click on my ad if my book only generates a dollar for me in royalties. Now, Amazon has auto-populated a suggested bid of $0.28 cents for me, but you can also see that it suggests that's the median. It would suggest maybe $0.17 to $0.38. Cents. But when people say lottery ads are cheap, you can honestly set this even lower than that. This does not mean 17 cents is the minimum they'll accept. You can start with a five cent default bid if you want. In fact, you can see that if I start to type, it tells me enter a bid of at least two cents. So you can literally try a lottery ad for two cents per click to see how it does. I believe I first started mine at five cents and saw a small bit of success. Not a ton, of course, but enough that I wasn't as scared of them and I think over the course of the next couple of days and weeks I proceeded to increase that to maybe seven cents eight cents and even 15 cents once I walk through all this with you I'll actually go back and see what it's set at right now so you can see exactly what my current lottery ad strategy is so I'm going to say five cents just as a starting default bid and then you can scroll down and see that negative keyword targeting is optional, so we can skip it. Negative product targeting, optional, we can skip it. Campaign bidding strategy. For the campaign bidding strategy, we want lottery ads to be incredibly low cost. So to make sure your budget is fixed, I say dynamic bids down only. This means that Amazon will take the initiative to lower your bid and your spend when they sense that an ad is going to be less likely to convert to a sale. And if you do put dynamic bids up and down, it will take initiative to raise the bid. So if you think that you're bidding five cents, it will potentially double that in real time if they sense that it's likely to convert to a sale. So again, to monitor your budget, and especially when you're first starting out, when you don't want any extra surprise fees or surprise increases, I would hit dynamic bids down only. And then finally you get below to settings where you can name the campaign. 
You can organize it into a portfolio of campaigns if you do have that set up and you're ultra organized. And you can choose a start date. So if you are filling this out on February 5th, you can of course start it immediately, but you can also plan ahead and for instance, say that you don't wanna start this until March 1st. You can also set an end date if you want to make sure that you are managing your money and for instance, trying this strategy out for only 30 days. Or you can leave it running and check in on it manually and turn it off or adjust it anytime you want as well. And then finally, you set a daily budget, and that's the amount that you're willing to spend on this campaign each day. There is a note telling us that most advertisers start with a daily budget of at least $10, but again, you do not have to. And this will align with the bidding strategy that you set earlier. So for instance, I believe that I did initially set up a $10 a day daily budget, but because my default bid was so low, at five cents a bid, for example, Amazon did not find that many places that they could throw in one of my books for only five cents that it added up to $10 a day. So just because I said I'm willing to spend $10 a day, I was only spending three, four, five dollars because they couldn't find enough placements. Now, on the flip side, if you are willing to spend a little bit more in your default bid, or for instance, if you did go up to this 58 cents that they recommend, you might need a higher daily budget because otherwise you're going to be limited. If you're paying 50 cents per click and you only have a $10 budget, that ad will only be shown and clicked on 20 times throughout the day before you are maxed out. So again, you can look at it either way. Personally, I like to set it based on how much money am I willing to spend on this experiment. For instance, you can set it at $5, set the end date 30 days from today, and just know that at the worst case scenario, you're trying out $150 in advertising for 30 days. And that would be at the max if everything was maxed out. And that would be the most you could potentially lose if you didn't sell a single book. From there, you hit launch campaign and your campaign is off. Now you will see that any campaign does take a little time to get started and as Amazon understands your books and understands how to match them with users, it should improve over time. So I'm not sure right off the bat what the best practice is for length of time, but I do think that leaving your campaign up for at least 30 days is probably the most beneficial to make sure that you are optimizing it and not cutting it off too early. So final thing before I go, as I promised, I am going to give you a true look behind the scenes and show you exactly what I am up to. So let me see exactly what my lottery ads are set at today. You'll see that even though I have other campaigns listed, All Books Lottery Ads is the only one I'm actually currently running on. So it looks like I have a daily budget of $7 set. My campaign is still called October Campaign, which probably means it's the last time I made adjustments to it, even though it's still running now in January. And I have now increased this to a big, lofty 14 cents per book. So again, this is after seven months of selling on Amazon KDP and trying out lottery ads. So I'm still currently running with default bids of 14 cents, which is kind of measly, not much to write home about. And it is delivering results. In fact, I think I increased this at one point, but because my books make such a small profit per sale, it really wasn't worth it. It wasn't delivering for me to have this default bid set much higher. But ultimately, that was something I didn't put a ton of research into beforehand and was not delivering me the same attractive A class as I was making before I tinkered. But you can see that it is easy to make slight changes along the way. And it has just been a really nice, comfortable, easy, relaxed way to get into the groove of working with ads without being fearful that I am going to completely turn my business inside out and lose money when I'm trying to help grow the business. 
that's it for today. I hope that it made lottery ads seem approachable and easy and less intimidating to you. And I hope that you can find a couple dollars to just try the process out and see if it helps your business grow. I truly think that lottery ads are what helped my business jump from ground zero and just a portfolio that I was hoping to get in front of people to something that is starting to consistently drive business day after day. If you have tried lottery ads, leave a comment below and let me know how they've gone. Have you heard any advice about a daily bidding strategy or is this kind of five cents, seven cent, 10 cent, what you're seeing others do? Did lottery ads work for you? Did they not work for you? What are your thoughts? What's your feedback? I'd love to hear. Again, I am always here to share my journey with you and show you as a real person behind the scenes trying to figure this whole thing out. It is possible and there are people that will help you when it's a little bit confusing along the way, but we don't all have to be six-figure gurus. We don't have to pretend like it's super simple. There are pieces that we gotta struggle through, but we struggle through together and then we get through the other side and hopefully start building that cash from the comfort of our homes on our flex schedule with our busy, crazy, hectic family life going around us. If you liked this video and you want to see more, please hit subscribe. It helps me support this channel and continue to make new videos. So until next time, goodbye.